Here I'll give you five helpful examples for using the VLOOKUP function in Excel. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. This tutorial is not going to cover basic VLOOKUP functions or how to use the VLOOKUP functions, what the arguments are, etc., etc. I'm assuming you already have an understanding of that. So let's start with the very first example. Here I'm going to show you how to use combined values. So here I've got a part and I've got the part listed multiple times because I have different sizes here. Now let's say over here I want to use the part combined with the size to return the quantity. To do this we're going to create a little helper column and this is going to be a recurring theme with VLOOKUP functions and tables of data. So let's go over here, insert a new column, let's just call this part plus size. This column is not going to be visible later on so we can make it as simple as this then use an ampersand and this. We don't need to put in a delimiter or anything like that. Copy that down. Now let's go create the VLOOKUP. So lookup value is going to be this, ampersand this. The ampersand is going to concatenate the values. So putting this for the lookup value is going to combine both the part and the size entries here. Then we can do a comma for the table array select our new column and all of the other data. And this is why it's important to have this column on the left side of your data. So you wouldn't want to put the part plus size column on the right side of the quantity or the VLOOKUP's not going to work. Column index number two, false for the last argument, enter. And there we go, ASC1 with a size of small has a quantity of five. Now what you can do here, it's a good idea so you don't confuse people, is to hide the column. So I just go up here, I right click column C, and click hide. And the VLOOKUP is still going to work, not a problem at, at all. If you want to unhide that column to work with it later, simply click B and D. So click over these two columns, right click, unhide and you have the column back. So all we did, just to recap, is we used a simple concatenation here using the ampersand to combine column A and column B in this new column. Then over here when searching for both ASC1 and small, we used the same ampersand to concatenate those two values. Let me scroll over. To concatenate those two values for the lookup value argument. Moving on, let's go to the if error function. So as you may know, if you look for something using the VLOOKUP that doesn't exist in the table, in this case ASC-8, you're going to get an error. The error is annoying, it's nasty, and it scares people. So here's our very basic, simple, easy to use VLOOKUP function. Now let's get rid of the error. If you're in Excel 2007 and later, all you have to do is if error then the first part, the first argument, is the value argument. The value argument is simply what you had in the cell before, which in this case is the VLOOKUP function. Click to the end of the VLOOKUP function, comma. Now what do you want to return if an error occurs? In this case, if the VLOOKUP function can't find the part. Well, you could do two quotes like that, two double quotes, and that would return nothing, so a blank cell like this. Or if you want to be a bit more helpful in this case, you could put something like not found in between the quotes. So if it doesn't find it, it's going to return not found. And if it does find it, it returns the quantity. So once again, just the if error function, super easy, one of the best additions to Excel 2007. Now let's move to the next example, text versus numbers. This is a big problem. So here I've got a table of data, and the part numbers in this case are all numbers. However, they are currently formatted as text. This problem occurs very often when you import data into Excel, and I showed you how to fix it in a previous tutorial, where you can easily change all of these numbers into actual numbers simply by multiplying them by 1. However, let's say you're not able to do anything with the raw data over here, and you have to work with just 
the value that you're going to look up over here. So here I have the regular basic VLOOKUP function, and you can see that it's not going to find anything. It doesn't matter what I type in. Here it could be 1001, 1002. It's going to be an error. Now there's one really quick, really easy, really simple way that we can convert this value to text. We can do it in the VLOOKUP function itself, so we don't have to do anything over here. Just go to the lookup value, and either before or after it, you can put a empty space, so two double quotes, and an ampersand. Then hit enter, and it works. What that did, what that did right there, just adding that little thing right in front of or behind the lookup value, is it converted the number into text. And that's all. Just remember that, double quotation marks, ampersand, that's it. And now everything works. Perfect. Now let's do it the other way around. Scroll down on the same tab, text to number. So same scenario, except for this time, all of these are formatted as numbers. And over here, for one reason or another, this is formatted as text, and we can't change that. Very, very simple fix, although oddly easy to forget. Double click the cell, go in front of the lookup value, and simply input two dashes. Dash, dash. Enter, and now it works. So you can see it's very, very easy, easy to forget as well. If you want to convert the number into text, just put double quotation marks and the ampersand in front of the lookup value. If you want to convert to numbers, just put a double dash in front of the lookup value. And you can also see, actually, when I entered the number 1001, it changed it back to a number here. So it doesn't matter if you use a number or you use text, it's still going to work. So let's place that back as text by putting a single quote in front of it, enter, and you can see it still works. Now let's move to the very next example, data with extra spaces. Once again, always clean your data when you bring it into Excel. That includes applying the trim function. I showed you how to do that in another tutorial for easily cleaning data, and you should really take a look at that. But if you can't clean your data for one reason or another, you can only work with a VLOOKUP formula, then here's how you do it. So I'm looking for part ASC-2. There it is. Why won't it work? Because there's a sneaky little space right there at the end. Now let's change our VLOOKUP formula so it'll work with this. Go to the table array, and we're going to put a trim function around that table array. Now if you just hit enter, it's not going to work. We have a different error. What you need to do here is we are creating an array formula. So you need to hit control, shift, enter. And then that's going to work. You'll know that you did it correctly because if you look up to the formula bar, you'll see the little curly braces around the formula. You cannot enter those by hand. You have to hit Control shift enter What the formula did is it effectively applied a trim to everything in the data table, including in column A the part numbers. So now it doesn't matter how many spaces, or if we have no spaces. So what we did, regular VLOOKUP function with a trim function around the lookup table, and then Control shift enter Now, you can also do this by adding another column and applying the trim function to all of column A, and then removing column A, or keeping column A and hiding the new column like we did in the other example for this tutorial. You can do a lot of things, but using the trim function is really easy, and once you know how to do it, really simple. You don't have to deal with extra columns, extra formulas, and it's not going to be too confusing down the road to figure out what's going on. Also, if you're worried about extra spaces in the cell over here, D2, where someone's going to enter the part number, you could apply a trim there. It's really not going to hurt anything. The trim function removes spaces from the front and the end of a value in a cell, and it removes any consecutive spaces within the cell. So if there's one space after another inside the cell, it'll change that to just one space. Now let's move to the last example, extra characters. Once again, you have your data table, 
it's being a real pain and you know what and you have parentheses around everything now here it's going to mirror a previous example where we added a column a little helper column because that's honestly going to be the easiest and most intuitive way to do this in this case we do need a little tricky formula for that though so let's go ahead and add our helper column right here part I'm going to call this part 2 now we need a formula to remove the parentheses this is going to be a text manipulation formula and I highly encourage you to check out some of the text manipulation tutorials from Teach Excel because here I'm not going to go in depth on how to do it just a very simple one let's remove the first and the last character we're going to use the mid function and then we're going to say what do we want to do it to this text right here where do we want to start let's start with number two because the second character is after the opening parentheses now how many characters do we want to get well we want to get however many characters there are without parentheses so what we do is we use the len function that's going to count how many characters are in the cell and then minus two so we subtract two because there are two parentheses in the cell then we close up the mid function enter and we have a nice clean part number without the parentheses copy that down and now what you can do is to leave it as a formula like this or if you want if your table is not going to change that much you can hit control C alt ESV enter to copy paste values so there are no more formulas here I'm gonna go ahead and leave the formulas in now let's create our VLOOKUP function lookup value now for table array we use the new column as a leftmost column column index number two range lookup false for exact match close parentheses enter and now it works now let's go ahead and hide this column because there's no reason to leave it out there to confuse people and there we go so you can see that a lot of working with VLOOKUP formulas has to do with making sure that your data is well appropriate for a lookup you want to make sure that it's formatted correctly there are no hidden spaces text versus numbers you want to make sure the VLOOKUP formula looks okay instead of throwing crazy errors that people might not understand but for these five tips for VLOOKUP functions, they're really going to help you get a better understanding of how the function works and how you can adapt it to work in your situation. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.